Hi and welcome to Wrangle the Stars. Today I'm here with Maddie Doe, the tribute of the film fest. Hi. You're wrangling me. I mean, I am. I'm wrangling. No. Yeah. I, I don't know. That's a that's a format. It's called. No, this like place that. is called. You know, the theme is Find Your Wild, and they're deep wranglers. <laughs> and I think I'm one of the rather wild ones at this festival. Yes. Really? Okay. So. We're gonna come back to that later. <laughs> but we're also here with Buddy G. Hey, hey guys. Buddy right. G's less wild. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely less wild. Okay, so are you enjoying your time at the film festival? It's actually really phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what to expect because um, our film played last year, but it was an online edition, so mm -hmm. we didn't get to come to Oldenburg. And every time I said, everyone said, oh, Oldenburg's so cool, it's so cool. But they said, but it's small. Mm. It's really small. And so I didn't expect the festival to be so grand, mm -hmm. actually. And I came here and it's like, there's just so much going on. Mm. And every night there's something to do. Every day there's a movie to watch, you know? And buddy, you actually knew that already since you're a regular guest, right? Yeah, this is my 12th year here. Mm -hmm. I first came here in 2008 and been coming back ever since and just love it here. It's great. So why do you actually keep coming back? It's a great festival. It's, you know, it's, it's a big festival because mm -hmm. they have really great films and it's independence, which I'm an independent filmmaker mm -hmm. like Maddie is, so we support that. Mm -hmm. And it's just... You know, it's just a great, it's almost like the festival takes over the city. Mm -hmm. you know, like We just feel like part of the city. A lot of times festivals don't have anything to do with the places where they're from. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, even even a, a, a big place like Berlin, you know, it's, the festival is almost separate from the city. You know, but here, the festival sort of is the city. Mm -hmm. You know, like we're going out for lunches and we're going to the local places. Well, for years we used to go to the, the Epson Zupa, Munzes, mm -hmm. Epson Zupa was like a tradition. So I just love that, you know, I just really, it, it's just almost like a vacation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is. Yeah, right? <laughs> and Maddie, you're the tribute this yes. year. How do you feel about that? I feel it's really funny when people call me the tribute because there's this series of books, uh, Mocking Day, uh -huh. and the tributes were the ones that were being sacrificed <laughs> to battle, you know, so like, I, everyone gets like, oh, Maddie, the tribute, oh, you're the tribute. I'm expecting something really strange at the ceremony, like I'm going to have to like fight for survival or something, but that's fine, I'm used mm -hmm. to it because all my films are kind of like a fight for survival, Yeah. <laughs> so it works. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're basically known for your horror movies. Yes. But you're, they're not your everyday horror movies, right? No. Why not? I mean, I think that the reason why I'm getting this award, mm -hmm. and it's and it's such a big honor for me, I'm not the kind of person who has ever expected that I would be a filmmaker, much less get a tribute award. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, I'm still a little bit mind blown. Um, but my films, they are the kind of films that um, I always say, they have a need to exist. Mm -hmm and they don't necessarily follow anything that's been done before. Mm. Because having not been a filmmaker before, I don't know what came before, so how can I imitate something when I don't know what's ever been done? Mm. And I think that that kind of independent thread of storytelling mm -hmm. is exactly what Oldenburg loves. And now here I am being sacrificed with an award. <laughs> being sacrificed a tribute. for an award. For an award, <laughs> being a tribute. <laughs> okay, and um, you, like, why did you actually decide to film horror movies and not like romantic comedies, which are also part of Lao, right? Lao people love romantic comedies. Mm -hmm. Lao people love romantic stories. Like all their music is about romance or lost love. Yeah. But I've just never been a romance fan, you guys. Mm -hmm. In fact, oh, you know, I'm married, but my poor husband like is not married to a romantic. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad for him. Mm -hmm. I think. Um, Everyone says, you know, everyone experiences love, but I don't think love is the same in every culture. Mm. So when you see how like a German man and a German woman flirt, I might not find that romantic. Mm -hmm. And when you see how an American flirts, uh, a Lao person might say, well, they're so aggressive. That's not romantic. Mm -hmm. But everyone knows how to be afraid and everyone has the same kind of fear. They fear mortality. They fear the unknown. So mm -hmm. horror to me is really the universal language that speaks to everyone. And so that's why I love it. And it's, it's also very unique. And also, is that true that you're like the first and only female uh, director in Laos? 
Well, I'm the first and only female uh, feature filmmaker. Feature film, okay. I think uh, there are other documentary makers mm -hmm. and short filmmakers. And actually, there's uh, some young women who are in, well, who graduated from university and who are starting yeah. to like experiment with what their genre is, mm -hmm. you know? And it's great because like they make these short films and it's like, what is a new voice of lab mm -hmm. going to be, you know? And so, but right now, I'm the only woman making feature films. Oh, okay. Fiction, I mean. Mm -hmm. Fiction. Yeah. And um, was it hard for you to move from LA to Laos? Because LA is like, is like the spot for filmmakers, directors, writers. But Laos <laughs> isn't. <laughs> Or is it? I mean, it's my spot. <laughs> <laughs> it's your spot. Exactly, yeah. It's your spot. You put it on the map, basically, right? But I mean, like, yeah, you're right. LA is the spot, Hollywood mm -hmm. is the spot for filmmaking yeah. in, in, I guess you could say, the occidental part of the world. Mm -hmm. But that didn't mean anything to me because I wasn't a filmmaker when I lived yeah. in Los Angeles. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. And I didn't, uh, I didn't know I was going to be a filmmaker mm -hmm. or even really know much about film. So that was like a world that I didn't even think that um, affected me or affected the public. Mm -hmm. That was just some separate parallel dimension that I didn't know about. You know, my Los Angeles is going to get pho noodles at, <laughs> at Little Saigon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, this is my Los mm -hmm. Angeles. Um, Uh, or getting like going to the Asian restaurants mm -hmm. to like see the new grocery store that's really big like wow we have a two-story <laughs> Asian grocery store that's mm -hmm. amazing <laughs> so it's a little bit different but um, I went from I guess the culture clash was a, the culture shock was different mm -hmm. so it wasn't so much a film thing but just going from a place where um, we're very I, I guess what you could say is we have a different lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Life moves very fast in America and everything is instant. I have to have this now. Mm -hmm. um, then you move to a place like La where we say we live the slow life. Mm -hmm. And we have this saying that's and it means don't worry about it. It's okay. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. And we can just enjoy the slower pace of life and really take the time to consider what's important to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the big difference. And I think that that's what really inspired me to be able to become a filmmaker was that I can take the time to make a story mm -hmm. and to put it on screen and not have to feel like I have to do this now. Mm -hmm. you know? So how did you actually slide into this industry? I mean, it was a complete accident. Really? <laughs> complete accident. I, um, Oh my goodness, getting into film was just like so weird for me. Um, I was a ballet teacher. Mm -hmm. And I actually used to do nails, mm -hmm. which it's a shameful. Look at how crappy my nails look right now. <laughs> like I'm a bad manicurist now <laughs> because I have to focus on film. <laughs> and um, I went back to lab to be with my father mm -hmm. because I thought my father needed help and it needed care. Mm. Uh, turns out he was fine. Mm -hmm. he, he, <laughs> he didn't need me so much. <laughs> But um, we went with uh, my husband and my dog. And my husband noticed that there was not a lot of Lao film happening there. Mm -hmm. We heard about a small production that was starting to work on their first thesis film. Mm -hmm. From a, he had graduated from uh, Anisa had graduated from a film school in Thailand and was doing this thesis film. Mm -hmm. And then there was like nothing else. And then we heard about these older films from my producers, my current Lao producers. And so we got to meet with them, and they said we are lacking in content and we don't have anyone making new content mm. for us and we're older now we don't want to direct and write anymore we just want to produce and so my husband really took that opportunity to mm -hmm. be like well um i'm a screenwriter <laughs> so i can help you with that mm -hmm. and they were just like so excited they go that's so great you can write us a film and then you can direct it and my husband's like no 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 no, no i'm not a director uh, you know people hide me in a dark room mm -hmm. chain me to a keyboard <laughs> and nobody wants to see the writer right mm -hmm. and he's like and i don't even speak lao language and i was just there to translate for him mm -hmm. to translate into lao language for him and then he got really um i guess he got nervous and mm -hmm. he said Well, my wife Maddie, Maddie can do it. She speaks Lao, she's a Lao person, and she has many years of performing arts experience. Mm -hmm. I teach seven-year-olds the difference between their right foot and their left foot. <laughs> and even that like takes a year sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, like right and left. Like don't even start about plié and pirouette, like they don't know that. <laughs> and they got so excited because They were like, we've never had a woman make a feature film in Laos before. Mm -hmm. Wow, we should celebrate! And they opened a bottle of whiskey and celebrated. And I was just like, I, I guess I'm a director now. 
and I and I'm a director now. <laughs> okay, so talking about accidentally going into the film industry, um, your decision to be a filmmaker was also pretty late, wasn't it? It was late. I was a musician. I grew up in a musical family. My father mm -hmm. was a professional musician, so I played music into my adult years. And uh, I studied music. I could read music. I thought that would be my life. And mm -hmm. then when I was in the university, I needed to fill in my schedule to be a full-time student. Mm -hmm. And I took a course. It was called Politics and Film. and just changed my life. Mm -hmm. I had no idea what went into making a film, all the decisions. I thought you just show up with some actors to a location, you get out and you film. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and once I learned about the making and the decisions and the, I can't say the control because as a filmmaker, you really do have control. There's so much more, there's so much compromising. Mm -hmm. The location isn't exactly the way it was in the, in the script. And so, but the idea that you get to decide these things and you can create your own reality, I just, I fell in love with. And I realized, mm -hmm. My, my, my skill set was more appropriate for that mm -hmm. than it was for music. Sounds very interesting actually. And, but you, not, uh, you don't only do films, you also write novels, right? Yes. And which actually do you prefer? Do you prefer making films or slowly, uh, solely writing? You know, if I had to pick, I don't want to pick, but if mm -hmm. I had to pick, I would pick film because it's much more exciting. When you're on a film set, you're dealing with anywhere from 10 to 50 people. Mm -hmm. And it's exciting, you're filled with adrenaline, there's a million questions, there's problems. It's it's really, really hard, but it also keeps you wired. Writing a novel, I just finished my last novel, took three years to write. Mm -hmm. My books take anywhere from two to four years to write. It's very lonely mm -hmm. and it's exhausting. It's more exhausting than being on a film set because mm -hmm. there's no adrenaline. You're in a room by yourself yeah. mm -hmm. and you have to motivate yourself. And I spend hours unmotivating myself I'll do it you know the internet is dangerous for me because I will just surf the net all day long when I should be writing I mm. love and myself then, to YouTube yeah <laughs> I, 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 totally so I filmmaking is more fun but writing is really a totally pure vision from my stories mm. there's no interference there's no compromise mm. everything is exactly the way I would want it because I could just write it and mm. I don't have to translate it into into a physical world mm. So it's more rewarding, but it's less fun. Mm -hmm. So you both have very creative minds, right? Would you say so? I like to think so. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you have to. If you're a filmmaker or a writer, you have to have a creative mind. Yeah. But, but how do you come up with those ideas that you then realize into a movie or a book? This is a, this is a strange question for me because, of course, our life experiences inform a lot of the mm -hmm. stories that we make and a lot of the decisions that we make for our films but um i feel like when i say that it's a strange thing to say because at the same time if i were to make a werewolf movie you know i've never turned into a werewolf mm -hmm. when the moon was full before so like mm -hmm. i've never had the life experience of being a werewolf but um i think that life experience but also um whimsy and fantasy mm -hmm. and like just having this like imagination and um, this vision of what could or couldn't be mm. really comes together and it's quite opposite. Reality has mm. to fuse a little bit with the fantastic to be able mm. to make the kinds of films that Buddy and I make, I think, you know? Yeah, I would, I would agree mm. completely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you turn into a werewolf at night, Buddy? <laughs> In, internally, I do. <laughs> internally, there are, there are commonalities between turning into a werewolf and just living your life. Sure. That you know, there are there are things that you can latch on to. That you mm -hmm. just take your imagination and let it go. Yeah. What if? My whole thing is my creative spark is what if. Everything yeah. starts with what if. What if this happened? Yes. What if a guy woke up and he was this type of guy, mm -hmm. and he drank this for breakfast, yeah. and and that's you know that's what creativity is. What if? Mm -hmm. That's great. If you you start with what if and for me the what if already existed like for me it's not what if for me it's the situation is there your yeah. what if is there yeah and then i say and it goes a little farther i yeah. always like to push things kind mm -hmm. of like to the extreme and sometimes like when the audience has an expectation of what's going to happen i i meet that expectation mm -hmm. i like to give the audience what they want but then i like to break them afterwards by going exceeding that expectation mm. or going beyond it and the audience is being like why is it going so far <laughs> why is it so extreme mm -hmm. <laughs> sounds very very cool so i think the interview is coming to an end okay, okay. you're gonna sadly, ditch us at a gas sadly. station <laughs> yeah totally yeah <laughs> <laughs> and um i hope you will have a great time yeah we at are. the film fest 
and I hope you celebrate yourself since you were the tribute. I mean, like, we're having a great time. I hope I survived the night, you know? <laughs> like, we're being wrangled in this interview and yeah. we're finding our wild, but like, yeah. I like to believe that uh, we're, we're here at Oldenburg because we're film survivors, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, we'll keep going. Yeah, <laughs> All right, so thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. For the interview. Cool. All right.